Kwame Nkrumah, born September 1909, Nkrofil, Gold Coast now Ghana, died April 27, 1972, Bucharest, Romania, was a Ghanaian nationalist leader who led the Gold Coast's drive for independence from Britain and presided over its emergence as the new nation of Ghana. He headed the country from independence in 1957 until he was overthrown by a coup in 1966. Kwame Nkrumah's father was a goldsmith and his mother a retail trader. Baptized a Roman Catholic, Nkrumah spent nine years at the Roman Catholic Elementary School in nearby Hafasini. After graduation from Akimota College in 1930, he started his career as a teacher at Roman Catholic junior schools in Elmina and Aksum and at a seminary. Increasingly drawn to politics, Nkrumah decided to pursue further studies in the United States. He entered Lincoln University in Pennsylvania in 1935 and, after graduating in 1939, obtained master's degrees from Lincoln and from the University of Pennsylvania. He studied the literature of socialism, notably Karl Marx and Vladimir Lenin, and of nationalism, especially Marcus Garvey, the black American leader of the 1920s. Eventually, Nkrumah came to describe himself as a non-denominational Christian and a Marxist socialist. He also immersed himself in political work, reorganizing and becoming president of the African Students' Organization of the United States and Canada. He left the United States in May 1945 and went to England, where he organized the 5th Pan-African Congress in Manchester. Meanwhile, in the Gold Coast, J.B. Dankwa had formed the United Gold Coast Convention UGCC, to work for self-government by constitutional means. Invited to serve as the UGCC's General Secretary, Nkrumah returned home in late 1947. As General Secretary, he addressed meetings throughout the Gold Coast and began to create a mass base for the new movement. When extensive riots occurred in February 1948, the British briefly arrested Nkrumah and other leaders of the UGCC. When a split developed between the middle-class leaders of the UGCC and the more radical supporters of Nkrumah, he formed in June 1949 the new Convention People's Party CPP, a mass-based party that was committed to a program of immediate self-government. In January 1950, Nkrumah initiated a campaign of positive action involving nonviolent protests, strikes, and non-cooperation with the British colonial authorities. In the ensuing crisis, services throughout the country were disrupted, and Nkrumah was again arrested and sentenced to one year's imprisonment. But the Gold Coast's first general election, February 8, 1951, demonstrated the support the CPP had already won. Elected to Parliament, Nkrumah was released from prison to become leader of government business and, in 1952, Prime Minister of the Gold Coast. When the Gold Coast and the British Togoland Trust Territory became an independent state within the British Commonwealth, as Ghana, in March 1957, Nkrumah became the new nation's first Prime Minister. In 1958 Nkrumah's government legalized the imprisonment without trial of those it regarded as security risks. It soon became apparent that Nkrumah's style of government was to be authoritarian. Nkrumah's popularity in the country rose, however, as new roads, schools, and health facilities were built and as the policy of Africanization created better career opportunities for Ghanaians. By a plebiscite of 1960 Ghana became a republic and Nkrumah became its president, with wide legislative and executive powers under a new constitution. Nkrumah then concentrated his attention on campaigning for the political unity of black Africa, and he began to lose touch with realities in Ghana. His administration became involved in magnificent but often ruinous development projects, so that a once prosperous country became crippled with foreign debt. His government's second development plan, announced in 1959, had to be abandoned in 1961 when the deficit in the balance of payments rose to more than $125 million. Contraction of the economy led to widespread labor unrest and to a general strike in September 1961. From that time Nkrumah began to evolve a much more rigorous apparatus of political control and to turn increasingly to the communist countries for support. The attempted assassination of Nkrumah at Kulugungu in August 1962, the first of several, led to his increasing seclusion from public life and to the growth of a personality cult, as well as to a massive buildup of the country's internal security forces. Early in 1964 Ghana was officially designated a one-party state, with Nkrumah as life president of both nation and party. While the administration of the country passed increasingly into the hands of self-serving and corrupt party officials, 
Nkrumah busied himself with the ideological education of a new generation of black African political activists. Meanwhile, the economic crisis in Ghana worsened and shortages of foodstuffs and other goods became chronic. On February 24, 1966, while Nkrumah was visiting Beijing, the army and police in Ghana seized power. Returning to West Africa, Nkrumah found asylum in Guinea, where he spent the remainder of his life. He died of cancer in Bucharest in 1972. Black nationalism, political and social movement prominent in the 1960s and early 70s in the United States that gained popularity among black Americans. The movement sought to acquire economic power and to infuse among black people a sense of community and group feeling. The roots of black nationalism can be traced to Marcus Garvey's Universal Negro Improvement Association of the 1920s. Many adherents to black nationalism assumed the eventual creation of a separate black nation. As an alternative to being assimilated by a predominantly white America, black nationalists sought to maintain and promote their separate identity as a people of black ancestry. With such slogans as, Black Power, originated by the activist Stokely Carmichael, and Black is Beautiful, they also sought to inculcate a sense of pride among black people, particularly as the civil rights movement faced new challenges in the wake of the assassinations of Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr. Gold Coast, section of the coast of the Gulf of Guinea, in Africa. It extends approximately from Axum, Ghana, or nearby Cape Three Points, in the west to the Volta River in the east and is so called because it was an important source of gold. An area of intense colonial rivalry from the 17th century, it was acquired by the British in the 19th century. The Gold Coast Colony, as Ghana, became a dominion of the British Commonwealth, March 6, 1957, and achieved independence as the Republic of Ghana in 1960.